This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a horror, sci-fi, and drama film called Carriers. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Brothers Brian and Danny travel with Brian's girlfriend Bobby and Danny's friend Kate. During a game of 20 questions, Kate asks about death. Brian condescendingly wonders if that's a good question, given their current circumstances. Soon, Brian suggests taking the upcoming interstate, but Danny reminds him to follow the rules they sent. Brian asks which rule they would break since he's already driving a stolen Mercedes over the speed limit. He lifts his hands from the wheel to make his point, causing their car to almost veer off the road. They come upon a van and a man blocking the road, so they close their windows. The man tells them he and his daughter ran out of gas, but Brian apologizes that they can't help him and asks him to move his van. Kate notices that his daughter is infected, so Brian hurriedly drives off the road to get around the van while the man tries to smash their window with a wrench. Bobby remarks that the man and his daughter will likely die out there. Brian replies that everyone will die anyway. Danny recalls the rules Brian set for their survival. Avoid the infected as their breath is highly contagious, disinfect anything they touched in the last 24 hours, and the sick are already dead and can't be saved. Soon, their car breaks down as their oil pan broke after going off-road. Danny suggests returning to the man since he had a working car. Kate vehemently protests, not wanting to go near the infected girl. Brian snaps at Danny to calm his girlfriend down, but the two answer they aren't dating. In the end, they walk back to the man with their masks on carrying gallons of disinfectant. The man introduces himself as Frank, but Brian pulls out his gun. Frank half sits in his van, reminding them that he could be infected, and shooting him would get his blood all over the van. Frank explains he picked up a radio transmission about a serum in a school outside of Farmington. Brian mocks this, citing the many failed attempts for a serum. Before things can escalate, Danny gets an idea and delegates Frank and his daughter, Jody, to the back. They seal the area with clear plastic then thoroughly disinfect the car. While cleaning, Bobby befriends Jody. Now driving Frank's van, the group takes their belongings from their own car, with Danny securing a picture of him and Brian when they were younger. Bobby plays with Jody against the plastic while a pastor delivers a sermon over the radio. The pastor likens those infected to weeds to be pulled out to strengthen God's harvest. Frank asks if Brian thinks God is punishing his daughter while they're rewarded because they're not infected. Brian explains that no matter how some people tried to avoid the virus, they still got infected while he worked burying the infected but is still healthy. They hear the pastor cough on the radio, which Frank notes sarcastically, making Danny laugh. Brian taunts him as an Ivy League boy, piquing Frank's interest. Danny reveals he got into Yale on a scholarship, but Brian says it doesn't matter now. Tired of Brian's attitude, Bobby slaps him, making them almost veer off the road. The incident led to Kate being in close proximity to Frank, so she steps out for some fresh air and spots a car. Brian and Danny go to siphon gas but find the tank locked. Danny opens the car to get the keys and finds a rotting man in the driver's seat. He puts on his mask and reaches for the keys but drops it, making him lean in to pick them up. Just then, the rotting man opens his eyes, so Danny falls back to the ground and kicks the door shut. They set up camp that night. Jody asks Danny about the picture he put up, so Danny tells her it's of him and Brian at Turtle Beach, where they spent every summer with their family. Frank asks him why they think they'll be safe there, figuring that's where they're headed. Danny tells him it's an abandoned motel, so they plan to make it their hideout until the virus dies down or humanity dies off. Meanwhile, Brian tries to soothe Bobby's anger towards him, but she says they should see other people. However, both burst out laughing, knowing that's absurd. They make out and begin to get intimate. By the campfire, Kate asks Danny if he ever thinks about their lost opportunity of attending Yale. Before he answers, they hear gunshots and vehicles approaching. They rush to put out the fire to avoid being seen. A man exits his car in the distance but gets shot by his pursuers. The next day, they drive by the dead man, who's tied to a post with a sign saying the virus came from Asia. The group arrives at Farmington and finds the deserted town filled with corpses. They prepare to head inside the school, but Jody doesn't want to be alone, so Bobby volunteers to stay with her. Brian warns her not to get too close before kissing her goodbye. Inside, they find the school empty. Kate tries to pay phones but is unsuccessful. Suddenly, a shadow runs past them, so they follow it to the gym, where they find empty beds and a doctor. Frank asks the doctor if he is in charge, but the doctor says the one in charge is already dead. When he turns, they see that he's infected. The doctor prepares a drink for his young patients, telling them that it's medicine. The doctor confirms that they had a serum, but it only worked for three days, then it just prolonged the pain. 
The doctor says he doesn't want to prolong it anymore, so he's preparing a drink full of potassium for the sick kids, thereby killing them. The doctor closes the curtain while Kate begs him to rethink his choice. Brian tells her there's nothing they could do because the sick are as good as dead. This angers Frank, who demands Brian's gun. Brian refuses, but Danny grabs the gun and throws it at Frank. Frank aims it at the doctor, shouting at him to stop. The doctor calmly tells him choosing life is just a more painful form of death for those infected. This sobers up Frank, so he walks away and drops Brian's gun. Outside, Bobby plays with Jody when Jody suddenly collapses. Bobby hesitates but decides to help Jody with her oxygen tank. Suddenly, Jody coughs up blood on Bobby's face. Panicked, Bobby hurriedly wipes her face clean and puts the plastic back up. She notices blood on her jacket, so she hides it under the seats just as the others arrive. Frank opens the back door to find Jody on the floor. Bobby doesn't share that she tried to help Jody, not wanting the others to find out. Jody wakes and announces that she needs to use the potty, so Frank instructs her to walk alone while he watches, knowing Brian will take this opportunity to leave them. Jody collapses after one step, so Frank rushes to pick her up. He tells Danny that they'll be back soon before he walks away. Brian begins unloading their belongings and tells Danny to get in the car. Danny doesn't want to leave them but eventually gets in. Frank distracts Jody so she wouldn't notice the car leaving. The group later stops to disinfect the back while Bobby discreetly kicks her jacket under the car. Afterward, they arrive at a resort and begin to explore. Bobby goes to the kitchen where Brian checks on her. Bobby lies and avoids his touch, making him think she's mad for leaving Jody and Frank behind. He reminds her that the sick are as good as dead, so he's protecting them. After he leaves, Bobby checks herself in the mirror, worriedly. Later, Brian pokes around the pool and finds a dead body, causing him to slip. He grabs onto the diving board and Danny pulls him back up. The four then explore the golf course where Brian rides a cart recklessly until he crashes on the sand. He asks Bobby for help, so she extends a golf club towards him, but Brian pulls her in and starts kissing her. Bobby fights him off and angrily walks away. The three play golf, but Brian is terrible at it, so Kate shows him how. Soon, they send golf balls into the resort's windows. One of the rooms is full of supplies, and a voice over the radio informs a guy named Larry that they're coming back. That night, Bobby asks Kate why she bothers checking the payphones when she knows the lines are cut. Kate says she's worried about her parents, but Bobby snaps and tells her to forget them as they're probably dead already. Kate walks off, so Danny follows her. Suddenly, they see lights outside, so they run away as voices shout from behind. They hide inside the kitchen and arm themselves with knives. A man in a full bodysuit enters but doesn't see them. He's about to leave when he notices the missing knives. Danny and Kate run but are caught by others outside the door. Brian returns from playing golf only to see a truck loaded with horses. A man exits the resort, so Brian tries to hide, but the horses alert the man. Brian knocks him down with a golf club and holds the club against his neck while he pulls the mask off. The man pleads for Brian not to touch him and explains that they just returned after scavenging for supplies, revealing that his group has been using the resort as their base first. Danny, Kate, and Bobby soon arrive, captured by the others. One of the survivalists named Tom asks them if there's anyone else, so Danny confirms it's just them. Another man returns with a golf ball and announces their supplies have been contaminated. Brian laughs at how extreme they act, which earns him a punch. Tom asks Brian what happened to Larry, who they left to guard the place. After seeing the corpse in the pool, the men think they killed Larry. One of them says Larry must have gotten sick and didn't tell them, but the others say that's impossible as they've been very careful. Brian taunts them for their extreme efforts, so Tom grabs him and pushes him to the pool's edge. Bobby pleads, and Tom orders them to leave immediately. Despite Danny's protest, the men take the extra supply of gas they have. One of the men grabs Kate and demands the girls to stay behind. Brian objects, but they point a shotgun to his chest. Tom reminds them they're not that kind of people, commanding them to release the girls. However, the others overthrow his authority and point a gun back at him, leaving Tom with no choice but to lower his gun. With the others in charge, they order Bobby and Kate to unclothe, holding them at gunpoint. Suddenly, the men start shouting and backing off upon seeing Bobby's rashes. The men force them to leave, so they run to their car and hurriedly drive away. The next day, Brian, Danny, and Kate wear masks as they silently drive down the road. With their gas running low, they stop by a deserted gas station. Kate immediately exits the car to get away from Bobby. She sees a payphone but doesn't try to call her family anymore. Later, she urges Danny to talk to Brian about Bobby. Danny approaches Brian, who is busy looking for the key to the locked gas pumps. 
Danny tries to broach the topic, but Brian snaps and tells Danny to get in the car. Brian drives off, but stops. He thinks for a while before telling Bobby to get out. Bobby tearfully looks at Kate and Danny, but they avert their eyes. She begs to stay, but Brian drags her out. Despite her protests, Brian leaves her with some water and food and tells her to find somewhere comfortable before she's too weak. Brian drives away, leaving Bobby crying. Back on the road, Brian tears up at what he did. They spot a car going the opposite direction, so Brian changes lanes and speeds towards them, stopping at the last minute and blocking the road. Danny steps out and tells the woman they need some gas, but they say they don't have any to spare. Danny spots the Jesus fish sticker on their windshield and tries to appeal to their Christianity, lying that he has a pregnant wife in the car. The women look torn but start to leave when Brian suddenly starts shooting. He hits the driver on the head, killing her instantly. Danny tries to stop him but Brian continues shooting. He approaches the car and shouts at the other woman to get out, only for her to shoot him in the leg. But down on the asphalt, Brian shoots the woman dead. While Kate fetches gas from the other car, Danny is in shock and snaps at Brian for what he did. Brian easily pins Danny and tells him to stop being so self-righteous. Brian mocks that Danny's content being a bystander while he makes all the hard decisions for their survival. He reveals that he lied to their parents that they were returning soon when he took their gun. Danny is surprised since he thought their parents were dead when they left. Brian tells him his only sin was doing all the dirty work so Danny could have a clean conscience, like dragging Bobby out of the car. This sobers Danny up who stops fighting. During their drive, Danny falls asleep and dreams he is back home. He enters his parents' bedroom and takes the gun from the dresser when he hears a noise behind him. He gingerly yanks the sheet off to find a rotting Bobby. Back in the car, Kate drives while Brian rests in the back seat. They stop by a house to look for supplies. Kate drives the van near the roof to allow Danny to climb into the only open window. Inside, Danny is met with the nozzle of a shotgun, but the old woman holding it has been long dead. He disinfects the shotgun and takes it. He announces to the house that he's only there for some medical supplies but gets no answer. He sees movement behind a door and slowly approaches, only to find a dog feasting on its owner's dead body. The dog growls at him but goes back to eating, so Danny carefully takes the medicine bottles on the table. When he knocks one off the table, the dog gets startled and tackles him to the ground. Danny fights the dog off and shoots it. Danny steps outside and explains the blood on him is dog blood. He takes the sheets he found and asks Brian to pull down his pants so he can treat the wound. When Brian does, Danny spots rashes on his thigh, much to his horror. Danny pulls his mask up and begins treating Brian's wound with shaking hands. He looks at the gun in the car, which Brian swipes out of his sight. Later, Danny confirms to Kate that Brian is infected. Back on the road, Brian sits in the back with a plastic divider up. They set up camp for the night, with Brian wrapped in blankets as the virus spreads through his body. He asks for the keys to make sure they don't leave him behind, so Danny tosses them to him. They sit around a campfire while Brian shares that Bobby wanted to start a family with him, which he finds absurd, though he laments that he would never know if he'd be a good father. Brian starts dozing off, so Kate signals for Danny to take the keys. Danny cautiously approaches his brother, but Brian suddenly wakes and confesses that when he dug mass graves, they buried even the ones still alive because they were as good as dead. Brian starts crying before falling asleep, Danny carefully takes the gun from Brian's hold and hands it to Kate. Danny cries as he rummages for the keys. He and Kate walk back to the car but Brian wakes up and asks where they're going. Danny tells him they're leaving but discovers that the keys he took are for the broken Mercedes. Brian holds up the actual keys and opens the car doors. Kate silently hands Danny the gun, giving him the responsibility to handle his brother. Danny steps out and asks Brian for the keys. Brian refuses and appeals that they go to the beach, just like the old times. When it doesn't work, Brian goads Danny to shoot him if he wants the keys. Danny points the gun at his brother, warning him to stay back. Brian asserts that he won't let himself rot alive and die alone, so Danny reminds him of the rules he made. Brian doesn't care about that anymore, so Danny shoots him dead. The next day, Danny burns his mask next to Brian's burnt remains before he and Kate drive off. After a day of driving, they finally arrive at the beach. The beautiful waters welcome them, but Danny feels empty. He remembers the summers he spent with Brian there, realizing the sanctuary they were seeking has lost all meaning with his brother gone. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.